Oh. Vindication for me. Kellerin? Clone Troopers. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This is like oh Vegas. God, this is like oh me god. at 3 a.m. in Vegas going up the elevator. <laughs> Just lost, confused, scared. I need an adult. <laughs> Where's all my money? Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> Yes! That's yes! Ahmed! Ahmed! Woo! He, it's actually canon. His, his, the guy is canon. Yeah, um, uh, uh, Kellerin? Kellerin. Kellerin. Kellerin Beck. Kellerin Beck. Kellerin Beck. Beck. Doesn't, isn't his nickname like Dual Sabers or something? Oh, <laughs> Terrible I nickname. Think you, I, I think you might be right. Terrible nickname, but great the character. Man, this is just prequel redemption again. Like, just giving this guy who has taken so much crap and giving him the greatest role in The Mandalorian. This yes. is incredible. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. The Mandalorian Chapter 20 did it, everybody. They did it. They introduced an old friend as a new character, Dank Farrick. What a time to be alive. Woo! We now know who saved Grogu. We now know what. We have several different definitions of a, of a foundling, and I'm at best. Man, that man can keep a secret, because you know he was probably itching to tell everybody yeah. that this was his future. This is The Break Room Presents Wookie Leaks, our weekly Mandalorian after show. I'm Eric Voss. My Easter egg breakdown's coming tomorrow. Right now, I'm here discussing this episode with Tommy Bechtold, and just like a tiny crab disguised as a rock, we have a surprise guest joining us this week, Hector Navarro. <laughs> it's me, I'm a tiny crab. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, what uh, what an exciting, exciting week. You know, I, every every week they sneak in these little subplots. At any point, Grogu can flash back to his dramatic I know. past. God, that was so and stressful all, too. There's something about the repetitive, like that press thing that was slamming down yeah. that was giving me so much anxiety. I'm like, is she gonna try and push Grogu under this thing? Like, I don't know <laughs> why. I did the same thing when I watched the hydraulic press squishing Skittles. Yes. I'm like, oh my yes. God. When my, <laughs> when Ahmed best saved me from a horrible day at school. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, let's recap. Tommy, talk us through what happened this episode. Absolutely. Uh, well, for an episode that really only had three locations, a lot happened. I got to say. <laughs> so much. I'm going to try not to be overly emotional. Let's go. We open on a well-regulated Mando militia in the morning as everybody's kind of just showing off their new shiny toys, open carrying. Din decides he's going to go full <laughs> hockey dad, and he puts Grogu up against Ragnar. We learn Visla. Uh, looks like uh, uh, Paz Visla was raw dog in at some point about 11 years ago. Then little Wesley, <laughs> little Ragnar, was stolen by a raptor. Also confusing that these things' names are raptors, right? Like that's kind of right. Is, is it raptor? raptor? Tommy, ra Tommy, raptor just means bird of prey. Remember, that's okay. what Sam Neill said in Jurassic Park one, right? They that's true. Bird of yeah. prey. So this is literally it sounds a like a six foot turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can they get a new training ground? Yeah, they were just dude. on this beachfront. Some people shouldn't be beach people. Some people, I, there's yeah. no need. We know we know that the armor and Paz Vizsla and everybody were living on Navarro before, right? Like yeah. season one of Mando, but then yeah. like they got exposed. So did they have to go back? Like after that, after that happened, did they all look to each other and go, "We have to go back to that super dangerous planet. We have nowhere else to go." That's yeah. dumb. Move somewhere See, else. I I think the armor is like the mayor of Amity Island in, in uh, Jaws. It's just like, I will not it's, close the beaches. We got to keep these beaches open. Mandalorians, stand back and stand by. <laughs> All right. So Ragnar, stolen by a raptor, which Hector has so brilliantly informed us, just means bird of prey. Shouts, shouts and murmurs to Sam Neill. Uh, Bo-Katan's like, I got this. I'm going to go get this boy back. It's no big deal. You know, one thing I do want to point out, I loved the way the episode, this episode dealt with the jetpacks being faulty. I feel like normally yeah, jetpacks in all movies and TV work perfectly every time. And these guys ran out of gas trying to chase down uh, young Ragnar. And then we get this great scene with the armorer alone with Grogu as she kind of teaches him about Mandalorian customs. And that leads us to the moment in the show. We flash back to that night of Order 66. The Jedis are fighting off clone troopers. Of course, a brilliant young boy months ago named Thomas Bechtold predicted that they would be clone troopers carving through that door. Go back and watch my video. The receipts are there. I may have speculated it was other people too. I might have said Darth Vader or something's really stupid. And then people in the comments <laughs> roasted me. 
So <laughs> Grogu gets in the elevator. Who's there to rescue him? Ahmed, best baby, Kellerin Beck is there. I gotta say, I, I you know, all all kidding aside, the the fact that Ahmed Best got this incredible role in this show, A, he deserves it, and B, it's such a redemptive thing. Because the reality is you can make fun of Jar Jar Banks all you want. Ahmed Best is a good actor. I mean, he wouldn't have booked the role of Jar Jar Binks if he wasn't a yeah. good actor. They don't awesome. hire people for a Star Wars movie if they suck at acting. So now we get to see beautiful Ahmed Best's face. We gaze upon him with our own eyes. Uh, we take, we remove our helmets and slowly suffocate like uh, Darth Vader in uh, Return of the Jedi. Okay, <laughs> focus, Thomas. Uh, the rescue team tracks down Ragnar and they they rescue him, although he tries to mess it up. And we see those three little baby birds. <laughs> I thought they were gonna get little bits of Ragnar. Then we find out that he is Paz Visla's son. He's my son. Paz is like, sorry, bro. Mandalorians don't wrap it up. Bo returns with damaged armor, and she replaces one of her sigils with a mythosaur and then reveals to the armorer. That she, that she may have seen a mythosaur. And the armorer is like, yeah, that's fine. I'm never going to give you a straight answer. The armorer is like my <laughs> one friend, Nick, who has never given me a straight answer to a question in his life. And, and it's so frustrating. I honestly don't. We've been friends for 25 years. I don't think we've ever had a real conversation. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that was the episode. Boys, were you in tears? I was in tears. I shed a thug tear for that one. I clapped loudly. Yeah. I cheered. I, I had such a great response to the moment because I feel like I when we heard the name get him to Kellerin I was racking the Rolodex of yes. Star Wars characters in my brain going Kellerin mm -hmm. should I know that name Do I, is this like a, a character that we've known before that we've met before is this from the expanded universe is this like from a comic book or a novel or mm. have we not seen this character in live action but I'm like that sounds so familiar Kellerin what is that Kellerin is that from Rebels what is this and as soon as that door slid open I felt like, oh, it's Ahmed Best. I've actually seen every episode of Jedi Temple Challenge. Yes. <laughs> Where he played Kellerin Beck. And for a long time, from since that show came out, and I think that they produced that show, that great kids game show that was like Legends of the Hidden Temple, and it was mm -hmm. so cute and so well done. I think they produced that show before the pandemic changed things. And I think the pandemic really interrupted. Like, I think they're going to do a season two and beyond. Mm. So since that show came out and they put it on YouTube... Uh, people have been asking Ahmed Best online, hey, are we ever going to see this character in anything else mm. again? Uh, you know, is this character ever going to pop up in like an animated thing or a video game or comic books or whatever? And he was always like, I haven't heard anything. I would love to play this character. I have, I feel like I have more to sort of explore with Keller and Beck because he designed this whole sort of backstory that you don't really get, you don't get to see at all in the kids game show. That's not the format for that kind of story. Mm. So when that door slid open, and it was Keller and Beck. Mm -hmm. I was like, number one, it's Ahmed Best. Number two, I am familiar with this character. How cool mm -hmm. that they're fully bringing him into canon because the, the kids' talk, like game show may or may not be canon. I don't think it is. No. It's, not, it's not considered official Star Wars lore. But yeah. man, oh man, what a moment. I loved it. The way he says, uh, uh, you're safe with me, kid. You know, yes. he just, it was so reassuring. It felt like he was rescuing us in that moment. Yeah. You know, even at this point in the season of Mandalorian season three, there's a lot of like, you know, people being torn in different directions. And when we look back at the prequel era, when we look back at the sequel era, it, it just feels like there's a lot of division in the Star Wars yeah. universe and the Star Wars fandom right now. And this is one thing that I think is just a universal victory. I think yes. we, no matter what your feelings are on Jar Jar Binks, you cannot have, uh, you cannot disrespect Ahmed Best. You have to understand he was given a very difficult job and yeah. he crushed it. He crushed it. He was, he's such a delight and he's always had such a great attitude. So the yeah. fact that they gave this to him, it's a meta win. It fits canonically, I think, mm -hmm. with, with everything. There's no reason why he couldn't be the guy on the other side of those doors. I'm so glad it was him. I felt yeah. rescued in that moment. Absolutely. And, and, you know, there's a great term in pro wrestling called the forbidden door which is mm. like someone from another wrestling federation or faction <laughs> won't wrestle. Like they don't like people in AEW don't wrestle in WWE or whatever. I feel like this was like the forbidden door of Star Wars. Like now any character from a video game can show up in, in a Disney plus show. Like now more than ever, I actually believe we might get live action Cal Kestis. Like just because oh, of yeah. this. I mean, they pulled they pull the character off of a game show 
and made him yeah. amazing. I mean, you know, I loved it. I love. I could talk about it forever, but we must. We must talk about these sick drips. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. our merch partners at Nerd Riot Shop have some great new Mandalorian inspired items in their new The Way collection, including. Oh, that cute little foundling shirt Eric's got on. Uh, mm -hmm. And another mm -hmm. shirt called the Bounty Hunter mm -hmm. with the designs inspired by mm -hmm. the Beskar Steel of Mandalore. And if you purchase one of these shirts, you can opt to unlock a shout out on this show, like this one from James Garman. Angela, this is the way. Angela, that's my Tony Danza from Who's the Boss? Or this one from Heather, Heather Steven. Matt, Kyle, and Emma, thank you for watching with me. Love y'all. So visit nerdriot.shop now. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, James. You guys are the best. We love you. Visit nerdriot.shop now to grab one of these great designs. And don't take it off till the finale next month. Don't worry about stinking. Who cares? Who cares if you smell a little funky? You look good. If you smell funky, act funky, okay? Now, Eric, Hector, my boys, my sweet, sweet boys. Who the fat is Keller and Beck? We've gone into it a bit. <laughs> yes. So we, we know who Ahmed Best is, and we know that this was basically the Mark Summers or Kirk Fogg of the, the <laughs> yeah. Star Wars yes. uh, franchise, right? Uh, host of the Jedi Temple Challenge, kids mm -hmm. game show that came out in June 2020. Just a nice little uh, oasis there in the in the velvet crotch of COVID. But the <laughs> but man, this guy has been with with us since uh, the Phantom Menace as the the mocap performer and uh, the voice of Jar Jar Binks, mm -hmm. and and such a great. Such a great personality and someone who has had to weather all kinds of storms uh, because, yeah, I think we can all remember how much heat Jar Jar Binks received. Yeah. Uh, but they did bring him back in Attack of the Clones. He played one of the club goers in Coruscant. Uh, his character's name was Ahmed Beck. Uh, and in interviews, Ahmed Besta says that his uh, game show character, Keller and Beck, is related to Ahmed Beck. Ah. So in a way, he already kind of, through interviews, established himself as canon, which... Is the way you do it. Yeah, that that's is the way. way you do it. <laughs> Don't wait to get the call from Filoni. You just decide. And Filoni that's will be right. like, yeah, sure, you're nice enough. Yeah, I feel like Dave Filoni seems like the type of person that's like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds about right. And what's great about this is as the host, uh, it, like he's talked in interviews about how he wanted to not just host that show as I'm at best. He wanted to play it as a Jedi master. That was really important to him mm -hmm. because he knew kids were watching this and he wanted the kids to be able to suspend their disbelief and feel like they were in the hands of a Jedi master. Mm. And that, in a way, absolutely affected uh, Lucasfilm's decision to bring him back here. They wanted us to feel safe in the hands of a master. And not just kids. Uh, those of us, uh, man, man, talk to us like we're men. Uh, come hit me. Like, we're, we grew up with these with this character, and we, we've been with him on his journey this way. So to have him have this victory it means so much, obviously, to all of us. Uh, canonically, though, canonically, though, it, it, re it retcons his role as, as the host of this TV show, as mm -hmm. someone who is responsible for looking after Je uh, Jedi younglings uh, and Padawans uh, who are lost in in the way. Now, uh, Eric, uh, not to interrupt, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they killed real children on that game show, right? Oh, much absolutely, like, like, yeah. Much like yeah. the younglings? Okay. Yes. Yeah, Good. yeah. If you lose, it's, um, yeah, there's the 501st Clone Trooper Battalion is it's, just standing on the other side of that jungle. Pew, you know, pew. Disney Disney was really excited about developing actual lightsabers, and that was the first project they used them on, and those kids <laughs> got a hold of them, and those kids uh, took themselves out. So, you know, yeah. yeah. It's on them. Very sad. They signed the waivers. Yep, um, yep. But uh, I think where they're going next, they, they jumped out of uh, the Coruscant atmosphere into hyperspace. Mm -hmm. uh, they were rescued. That was the Senate Guard. That's who that group was. So it's like the last group <laughs> on Coruscant right now who might help them. Uh, those are the guys who like were escorting uh, Bail Organa. Mm. Um, they don't have any kind of <laughs> chips to turn on Jedi. No. Uh, they aren't fully, yeah. It's, it's someone who might still be loyal to mm. the Jedi Order. But those guys, uh, not long. But it sounds like Kelleran had this system set up in place. There's like a group of Jedi who knew to get the child to, to Kelleran. Uh, Kelleran has like a plan in place. He's got the earthquake kit ready to go. Yes. Uh, and he had this this system. With the fa So the fact that he had this like, I think we are seeing the origins of what was called the path mm -hmm. in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh. Like Kelleran might have been the first person to lay the stepping stones yeah. of that path. Are we going to meet your uncle right Quinlan Voss, you think? <laughs> I hoped it might have been Quinlan Voss, but I'm much I'm much Tommy, happier that it was Amadeus. Tommy, I have to I have to correct you. That is Eric's great 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 grandfather. Remember, it's a long 
time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, but we call him Uncle Quinlan. <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Uncle Quinlan. Um, Please, yeah, call me this, call me Quinn. This is such a great uh, another great example of the tragedy of Star Wars, which is all of the Jedi characters and the children apparently die uh, mm-hmm. in Order sixty six because they're not around in, in storytelling that takes place after. And now, whether it's Ahsoka Tano or Keller and Beck, baby Grogu, or even that baby, uh, that young Wookiee Jedi that we're introduced to yes. in the Clone Wars that then we learn in the Bad Batch actually survived. There's yes. all these amazing characters that Dave Filoni and other people are helping to create that all of them, I think, are too heartbroken to actually give in to the Order 66 storyline. They go, mm-hmm. no, no, no. They also, fa- they also found a way. They also yeah. found a way. So then that's why I think they created the path and all of that. Great. But I, I want to ask both of you guys, do you think that Kellerin survives Order 66 and, like you're saying, Eric, goes on to sort of help you know, create this sort of underground network mm. of Jedi, younglings, and other people that are underground resistance or rebellion in the early stages of of uh, the Empire. I think so. I mean, we have to question, like, how Kellerin lost Grogu at some point. Right. Like, how he fell into the hands of that Nikto gang and the Mandalorian pilot. Um, so, but I mean, that's like several decades from now. Yeah. Like, there's, he could have lived a long, happy life that we need to see on Disney Plus in the Kellerin Chronicles. <laughs> Never mind that Disney's scaling back and canceling other shows probably and firing people this is one thing that you need to green light and, yeah. and expedite to production right now uh but yeah, yeah yeah i think he does he obviously survives getting away from coruscant i think at that point that was the hardest part of it who knows where he's going to be hyperspace jumping to mm-hmm. at this point hector i think you're right did anyone die in order 66 because they, <laughs> they all just meet up at a barbecue like two years later they're like wait you're alive? <laughs> you're alive? Hey, you're alive. Us too. Oh, cool. Oh, my God. Hang on. One, two. Guys, all of us are here. Oh, except for Kiati Mundi. Oh, Kiati oh. Mundi. Oh. It's making Kiati Mundi and Plo Koon look like a couple suckers if I they know. couldn't survive Order 66 because we got kids surviving. It's In some ways, it's a lot easier for others. Yeah. Anyway. Not to mention all the awesome characters that they keep revealing in, like, novels and comic books there's that great jedi that, that that is introduced in the darth vader series that takes place right after the events of revenge of the sith who mm, was this yeah. jedi far off in the corner of the galaxy that was meditating the whole time and he was like super badass so there anytime they want to introduce a character that no 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 they weren't anywhere near order 66 and they're a jedi they can just do it and it's been awesome mm. so <laughs> yeah speaking of awesome let's thank one of our generous sponsors today If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton. With phone plans starting at just $15 a month. 15 clams, 15 bucks, 15 bones. Okay? Listen. Let's be honest, $15 is a lot of money for a man like me, but for for Hector, it's nothing. That's one of his premium lattes he's always trying to pour on me in the morning when I don't do the right thing at work. Uh, I I personally feel that this is gonna revolutionize cell phones. I'm bullish on Mint, guys. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless, like I said, for just 15 bucks, not 16 bucks, Eric, not 17 bucks, not 18 bucks, 15 gosh dang ding dong dicks and bucks. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. I mean, who doesn't like that? All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network, baby. The 5G, they're tracking us. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan. You got a pink flip phone, they'll use that. Switch easily in minutes with the eSIM. I'm about to eSIM right now. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at, say it with me, boys, 15 bucks a month. Bones. Cadbane. 15 bucks, 15 simoleons. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash breakroom. That's mintmobile.com slash breakroom. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash breakroom. Use that breakroom code. And go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with an expert who will do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and file for you so you can do not taxes. Show your eyes things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Taste not taxes. Sing not taxes a lullaby. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. 
Grab a saddle and ride not taxes into the sunset. With TurboTax, an expert will do your taxes from start to finish, ensuring your taxes are done right, guaranteed. So you can relax. Feels good to be done with your taxes, doesn't it? Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. Intuit TurboTax. Full service products only. Video meeting while expert does your taxes required. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Boys, let's get back into it. How many other Jedi do we think knew about Grogu? Now that we know that, that that he was rescued by a Jedi, yeah, he it seemed pretty siloed off. Um, we know, like my my theory for a long time was that it was Yaddle, but uh, I think Yaddle definitely was around when Grogu was alive. If Grogu's uh, fifty years old, then yeah. he's the same age as Anakin Skywalker. Yaddle, of course, died at the hands of Dooku in that episode of that amazing episode of Tales of the Jedi. So Yaddle might have known. I have to assume that uh, Yoda, Master Yoda, knew. That that Yaddle exist or that Yaddle and that Grogu existed, um, but yeah, it was like these other these seemed to be a group of Jedi masters. These were not other students. These were this was like a a group a chain of command, right? A, mm-hmm. a specific group of teachers that all were kind of his handlers. Um, I think it's interesting that uh, we didn't talk about this before, but um, Kelleran got into what looked like a Naboo cruiser, mm-hmm. right? It was the oh, same kind yeah. of design. As what looked like it was part of Padme's uh, mm-hmm. her her Naboo starfighter or her her cruiser. So, is that just a reference to the fact that Ahmed has played you know Senator Binks and that it's just kind of like it's part of the Naboo delegation? I would imagine they're not going to take him to Naboo because that's like <laughs> Palpatine. That's kind of his you know his publicly home planet. But here's mm. the thing, Eric. Here's the thing. What planet did Anakin Skywalker come from, and where did they hide Anakin Skywalker's kid? From that's Anakin Skywalker, like <laughs> the, very the Star point. Wars galaxy is small. It's very, very small, and that never fails to come up. Is the that's the last place they'll look is right under their nose. Like Ooh. I immediately thought they're gonna take him to Naboo. I thought that Keller and Beck had some kind of a system set up on Naboo, and knowing that that uh, Palpatine might have like an iron grip over it, I still feel like Naboo evokes the sense of Padme Amidala the Gungans, all of these people Mm. on Naboo were fighting for justice, were fighting for equality. So there is a sense of like, there's kind of a hope there and maybe, Mm. maybe baby Grogu could have spent some years there and been okay. But honestly, I don't know. Maybe they're going to take Grogu to Tatooine. (laughs) I say take him to Buffalo. Get him some wings Mm. at Duff's, a hot dog at Ted's, maybe some Mighty Taco, maybe some Bar Bill. They got good Rubens, guys. Obviously, Ahsoka didn't know, but remember, Ahsoka had parted ways with the Jedi Order at that yeah. point, so it makes sense that she wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, but it may have just been something like after Ahsoka left, Grogu was kind of unveiled to certain other Jedi mm. or something like that. Mm. Yeah, the the timeline of this is all very, very important. Um, but, like, yeah, it, he was obviously a secret. But it, it's just interesting that they had this student at this school who was getting private classes in another room. You know mm. some of the other students mm. are like, why are all the other... Like, why can't I get office hours with Master Mundi? Why does Mundi he get a right cool now? little floating egg? Uh, did you like how the floating egg was different? Yes. In the in the Jedi mm. Temple, like he had a different egg. Then I don't think that was the same one that we see him in later. Like they keep swapping out different eggs. No, the the one he has this year has is upgraded. It's like a little more. Like, yeah, he has got a new nice yeah. shiny one now with uh, the flashlight. No, I the one, the one moment in the show that really. Uh, certainly triggered some some core memories for me was Din Djarin going full hockey dad and being like, "My son will fight your son. He'll, <laughs> he'll fight him. He'll fight him right now." Uh, do we think Grogu's force abilities will be considered cheating as he continues his training? Like Din, Din Djarin seems really on board with him using him. He's like, "Do the thing you yeah. do." Yeah, <laughs> I was worried he was gonna force choke. And then the other Mandalorians are going to be like, which? Which? (laughs) I think that's a great question, though, Tommy. And I feel like if anybody were to ever throw any sort of side eyes through their visors to Din Djarin, he could Mm -hmm. just be like, I'm sorry, who was the person that united our ancient history? Who was it? Was it someone who... Who, had, who wielded the dark saber? What's right. very important to our culture? Somebody who was both Mandalorian and Jedi. Somebody who had force abilities, but also subscribe to the creed, whatever that is. So he could just point to his kid and be like, my kid's like that. And if you guys yeah. don't like that, then you don't like our culture. Well, and Tar Visa is going to say, we hate Uncle Witch. We're glad <laughs> yeah. he died so we could get his lightsaber back on. <laughs> we hate Uncle Witch. <laughs> 
<laughs> we hate you, Uncle Jamie. That's from Love Actually. I think the fact that he forced slept uh, doing some Luke Skywalker moves, mm -hmm. I think that's as far as he, he'll be able to go. But when he's <laughs> forced choking people or if he ever pulls a lightsaber on, on them, I think they're going to be like, Whoa, we don't have room on the hockey Easy, team buddy, easy. Always point your weapon down range, bro. It's so funny how vague Grogu's abilities are because he's 50 years old. Like you said, Eric, he's the same age as Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader at this time, right? Darth Vader died a few been. years prior, but mm, like yeah. he's, he's as old as that character. He's 50, but he's a baby who can't mm. speak and he babbles, but he's like intuitive and he can kind of pick things up. <laughs> But he also can't move the way another fifty-year-old can. I don't know. It's just it's it's purposely vague, and he's very very mm -hmm. cute. And I am so shocked anytime Din does allow his son to do anything because I'm like, bro, you you've been with this kid for maybe a year, mm -hmm. maybe two years, according to John Favreau, maybe two and a half. How do you know what he is or isn't capable of, other than? He's been able to like calm down a rancor and he's jumped mm. around because Luke Skywalker helped him to jump around. Is he all of a sudden in this few years developmentally so much further ahead than he was when you picked him up in that little floating bassinet mm. the first time? Mm. It's weird. It's funny. It's adorable. I can't imagine Grogu is going to be able to pull that jumping trick off anymore because the next time Ragnar or whoever faces him off in a duel... That teenage kid's gonna be like, this baby's gonna jump, and when he does, I'm gonna pop him with the paintball mm. right in midair. Yeah. It's a one trick pony. What else is Grogu gonna do? Pop, pop, pop. Pow, paint him. <laughs> paint that little green bastard. Now, I also thought it was very sweet that when, uh, when uh, Bo Katan and the team got back, Din immediately went over and picked Grogu up. I was like, I don't know why that really got to me. He was like, because he, he was, he just saw someone else's son in peril and he's like, I gotta yep. go get, put my boy in my hands, my foundling. Speaking of foundlings, are they gonna try and train those three raptor babies? Can you train raptor babies to be Mandalorians? This is the way. Tommy, have, have faith, my friend. They can be trained. Those sweet, eight-foot-tall monsters can be trained. Hey, maybe not as Mandalorians, but as their steed, perhaps. Ooh. I think this is setting up where we're going with the Mythosar. Mm. I think we're going to see some of the Mandal... Uh, we're going to see the Vizsla family riding these things mm. as their mounts. And it's, they're going to have some raptors that they can use, kind of like <laughs> the Na'vi flying their, their they're steed. They're like the dire wolves yeah. for the Stark family. Yeah, there it's I mean there's so many Game of Thrones parallels here and I think there's uh with House of the Dragon and, and Game of Thrones and the Targaryens the fact that the myth the Sar was thought to be extinct and is actually mm -hmm. still alive. I think we're going to see the the family of Isla, they're going to be okay with uh Bo-Katan Kryze riding the myth the Sar cuz they're going to have these raptors that mm. they're going to be able I, to I also think, you know, guys, the book of Boba Fett just happened. Danny Trejo is just a phone call away. Call mm -hmm. his ass up. Bring him right. into the Mando season three. Have him train these giant beasts the way he trained their Rancor. And so, and and yes. Boba, Boba Fett gets to ride a Rancor. And Din Djarin, Bo-Katan Kryze, or Paz Vizsla, or the armor, or whatever the characters we want. Because like you said, Eric, uh, Bo-Katan's probably going to be riding a Mythosaur. All mm -hmm. these other Mandos get to ride uh, these crazy, uh, giant, uh, weird-looking babies. And it's going to be yeah. sweet. They're not going to be babies forever. They're not like Grogu. Grogu's they grow the only up. thing that's a baby forever. <laughs> What's the Simpsons quote? Baby alligators may seem cute, but they grow up. Uh, speaking of Bo-Katan, do you think she's planning to like take over this covert and uh, and then and then t challenged in for the dark saber? It felt like that conversation with the armorer was planting the seeds of a of a coup. I think she's going to be challenged to uh, to uh, or she's going to be pressured to challenge Din Djarin mm -hmm. because Din Djarin, you, you mentioned that moment when he goes over to pick up Grogu in that moment. Doesn't that kind of defeat what he's trying to do to train the kid to toughen him up as a mm -hmm. foundling to suddenly coddle him again like that? I think yeah. I think Papa Din Djarin is always going to feel those paternal instincts to protect him, and he's right. not going to he's going to eventually challenge that cult. Or uh, that cult mindset of yeah. like, this is the way the foundling kind of belongs to the tribe. Right. Uh, Paz even had that moment where he grabbed his son and pulled him over to him. I, I think that's going to break apart. Like the the nuclear family instincts mm. is is something that cult ideology always feels as a threat. You have to break that down and, and call people's parents suppressive persons. And so that really like the David, leader of the cult show us where mama. Shelley is. <laughs> where is she? <laughs> Where's Shelley? <laughs> I'm excited about Top Gun. I'm excited about Mission Impossible. I just want to know where Shelly is. That's all. Yeah. I'm going to go see Mission Impossible, okay? But just show me where Shelly is. Tom Cruise, I'll watch you jump a motorcycle off anything. 
Just tell us where Shelly is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah. Eric, you, you bring up a good point because my take on this is, is that I think that Bo-Katan was genuinely moved by the love and the acceptance she was shown by mm. this crew. The fact that she had the honor of sitting next to the fireplace. That mm. even though it's a cult mentality and she's like, how the hell are we supposed to eat? Fair question, Bo. Fair question. But mm -hmm. didn't explain to her, yeah, well, normally part of the, the the culture here is that you go off and you find a place to eat privately and you do your thing. It's not that big a deal. And she was like, okay, cool. I'm down. But the fact that that, that little scene showcased Paz Vizla showing the honor of this Mandalorian culture and saying, you get to be the one, you're our leader. You get to be the one to sit by the fire. I think she's taking all of that in. And my take is, is that because of Bo-Katan's history, as someone who doesn't subscribe to this very extremist version of the Mandalorian culture, and she takes her helmet off. Mando, Din Djarin, he took his helmet off for his son mm. because he loves his son so much. He did it for that moment that I think he's kind of the bridge between both of those ways of thinking. Like, he was willing to take his helmet off for something very important to him, and mm. Bo-Katan would do it all the time, and the extremist covert never really does it, the children of the Watch. I believe that Bo having seen the mythosaur, is going to somehow prove that maybe the mythosaur will return, maybe that's going to lead to something, but I think she's going to be able to unite all of the Mandalorian people and change their minds about some of their extreme sort of beliefs and, and core beliefs. And the other piece of evidence I have for this is that in the past two seasons, um, Paz Vizsla was voiced by Jon Favreau to go back to, as a, as a sort of a throwback reference to how Jon Favreau voiced a Vizsla character in The Clone Wars. But in this season, it's not been Jon Favreau. It's been just credited as Tate Fletcher, the actor who is physically embodying mm -hmm. the, the pa Paz Vizsla character. I believe that's because at some point in this season, Paz Vizsla is going to take his helmet off and they didn't want it to be Favreau. They didn't want you to kind of like mm -hmm. be taken out of that moment and they want it mm -hmm. to be an actor and it's going to be the Tate Fletcher performance mm -hmm. actor because these characters the armorer same thing i believe that the this group this children of the watch may get to a point where they change their minds and take off their helmets but they're still mandalorians mm. bo katan will show them the way bo katan will you not will unite all the mandalorian people because of her connection to the mythosaur because of this mission and maybe through all of that, and maybe after defeating Din Djarin in combat and taking the Darksaber back, and Din's like, cool, I could just go and be a dad on my own now with my son. I don't necessarily have to be a part of this covert, but instead can be you know, part of, Man of, of all of the Mandalorians as they all unite, go back to Mandalore, and then there's your happy ending. Yeah, it works for me. I hope Tate Fletcher still has that wax mustache under the helmet because mm -hmm. that's... That's the only way people are going to recognize him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. But no, I th yeah, I think it's clear that Din Djarin does not want the Darksaber. He is carrying it right now, but every time he unsheaths it, he he can't handle it. Um, so I think that's his destiny. Is I think he's, she's not going to have to fight him that hard for it. Um, so I think there's that. I think the fact that right now the armorer is running things in this cult, like a proper society needs to have, you know, both a spiritual leader and someone who is like, the, the leader leader. Mm. Uh, so right now, the cult is being run by just a high priestess. You need someone who is actually going to like, going to be like the physical leader, the one leading the charge. So I think really this this cult is in desperate need of someone to step up. And for whatever reason, Paz Vizsla hasn't been that. Mm. Or at least we haven't really seen that. He's too busy, as, as Tommy would say, Laying down that pipe, right? Just having babies left and right. Come on. Hel helmet on, pants off. That's the way we're going off. Mm. Get down. <laughs> you just got Vizsla. You would think out of all of the characters in Star Wars that Mandalorians would wear protection. But True. I guess Paz Vizsla did not. This is the way. This is the way. Oh, what a great question. Do they have condoms in the Star Wars galaxy? I want to know. They have mm. to have. They have to. No, they have a, a little droid down there. It's just like... <laughs> Holds up a little umbrella. He just wags his <laughs> finger at you. No, uh, 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 uh. no. <laughs> well, we'll leave it there for this episode of Wookie Leaks. Again, my Easter egg breakdown is coming tomorrow. You can follow me at EA Boss, follow Tommy at Tommy Bechtold, and a huge thanks to Hector Navarro for hanging out with us again this week. A lot of fun to chat about it with you two. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week to react to episode five. Of course, The Break Room is live every day at 3 p.m. And you can check out The Deep Dive. Please subscribe. Uh, and yeah, we have a new investigation that digs into what the hell is going on in Marvel Studios right now. And we got uh, a deep dive of the 1989 Batman coming out on Friday. I think you'll really yes. enjoy it. You can follow uh, New Rockstars, please, and subscribe to Wookie Leaks wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for watching. This is, is the way. way.